Hey, Riders fans, and welcome in. We hope everybody is staying safe during this quarantine and, and during this international pandemic, but we'd like to give a little bit of insight to what some of the players are doing in the Texas Rangers organization during this time. My name is Zach Bigley, the voice of the Rough Riders, and I'm joined by Josh Young, who is a big prospect for the Rangers organization, the eighth overall pick last year in the first round. Josh, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So let's start with this. It's obviously a crazy time here, in not only with baseball, but all over the country and the world. What are you doing right now to stay in baseball shape? Playing Fortnite? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, um, you know, trying to get the swings in when I can, trying to work out when I can. Um, you know, like all the gyms are closed down, so it's hard to go anywhere. I got some free weights, um, lots of buys and tries. Uh, just, you know, that's basically all we got. But no, a lot of body weight stuff. Um, I, got a, I got a trap bar so I can do some deadlift stuff, but I don't got a squat rack or anything, but um, a lot of running a lot of throwing with my brother and then we go and hit and that's pretty much it. Are you in San Antonio right now? Yeah, I'm in San Antonio. And what's it like being there with your brother? He's a he player at Texas tech right now. So you guys get to work out a little bit together. Uh, the competition is at an all time high. I think uh, being stuck in a house together and then, you know, getting to go to the cage every, every afternoon just brings out everything that's been stored up over the last you know 24 hours. So. <laughs> Who's a better Fortnite player? it goes back and forth but honestly probably him at the end of the day wow you're gonna concede uh, yeah that. oh i'm terrible <laughs> i am bad i'll have i'll have some games where i go off but that's literally a diamond in the rough it's, <laughs> it's rough to watch well hopefully you can beat him on the baseball diamond every now and again then oh, i hope so he's got <laughs> raw power so we go in and we have uh, i think it's hit tracks set up so you can see like distance, exit velocity, and everything. And he's right there with me, and then he always brags he gets more homers on the the machine. <laughs> and I'm just like, goodness, okay. Yeah, well, you you were a first round pick, so we'll see what happens in a couple of years for yeah. him. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, first spring training for everybody is always a really cool experience, and even though you didn't get to see your first full season in minor league baseball, you got to experience your first spring training, or at least most of it. What were some of the things that kind of stood out to you about that first spring training? I mean, you're just around the big leaguers, which is cool to see. Like, they're just like us. They're just humans. Like, I guess growing up, you always, like, idolize them. And then when you get to this point, like, you're trying to get there to, to compete with them. And so, like, you get to go over and jig and play games with them, and you just realize, hey, they're, they're just like you are. Um, but it's a lot of fun. You know, they're, they're really consistent in everything they do. They're very intentional in their work. So, like, getting to either work out with them or, or to at least just watch them, it was really cool. And um, I know spring training got cut short, unfortunately. Um, but no, the, the short time we were there was a lot of fun just to see those guys be around them. Uh, and then, you know, for me to learn a lot of guys' faces that I didn't really know. I mean, I was in Hickory. I didn't really know anybody. Either people got pulled up or uh, moved up. I didn't really know anyone. So I got to meet a lot of people and hang out with those guys. And it was a lot of fun. Was there anybody in particular at the big league level that you kind of uh, attached yourself to and tried to learn as much as you could from them? Oh, I'd say the closest I got with somebody was Nick Solak. He would always ride the bus with us to away games. So it was pretty cool to just pick his brain and, you know, figure out what he does. Cause I think he got called up last year for the first time. So it's like, Hey, it's kind of fresh. Like what's it like? Uh, what'd you do to get there? You know, just stuff like that. You know, I, I b truly believe that, you know, success leaves clues. So when you, people are successful, you try to pick up on what they did and try to get that experience. What kind of clues did you pick up in your first taste of professional baseball last year? Oh, hit the fastball. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't wait around for the off-speed stuff because it's pretty good. Um, what, what kind of, a, I, I guess, difference did you see from the collegiate level of playing in, in the Big 12 and then going up to professional baseball at A-ball? Uh, less fans. Yeah. Less rowdy. Uh, I would say college is it's amateur baseball for sure. So like they feed off momentum. Like when you're playing a home game, like I play in Lubbock, uh, you could be losing by five. You hit a three run homer or something. The crowd's rocking. You got all that adrenaline. And so now it's like, okay, you have to create that for yourself now. How how can you do that as a team? Um, so that was something. It was pretty cool to see because I went to a, a crowdheads team that was making the playoffs. So it was cool to see how they did that and how they, like, rallied around each other. It was pretty cool. 
What's it like walking into a clubhouse like that where you are meeting a bunch of different people and new people that you've never played with and, and trying to assimilate into that while also dealing with a little bit of the pressure of playing your first professional baseball season? I'm not going to lie. I was kind of scared walking walk the first time. You know, you walk in and you, it's like you're a ghost. Everyone just like stares at you. Um, and then, you know, everyone's got like preconceived notions of who you are and why you're there. Um, so once you get past that, all the guys are pretty cool. They're, when you get to when you get to meet him, the very first guy I talked to is Matt Watley. He was my locker mate uh, right next to me, so he like introduced me, showed me the ropes, uh, pretty much. But you know, it, I've always said like baseball is a game of individuals playing a team game because like you have to be ready at every position. The pitcher's out there; he's got to do his thing. Um, when you're hitting, it's like one versus eight. There's eight guys out there, catchers behind you. Um, but when you bring all those nine individuals together that are on the field. And you can produce something pretty special. I mean, we made a deep run, lost in the championship, unfortunately. But, um, you know, just just growing with those guys at the end of the season and seeing everybody um, really take off at the end. Because I know a lot of times at the end of the season, people want to shut down and just take it to the house. Uh, those guys kept fighting, and it was just cool to be a part of. You were pretty famous at Texas Tech for your, uh, I guess – off the field stuff, if you will, your your mental side of baseball and, and some of your little figurines that you had with you in the dugout and that sort of thing. How helpful was that kind of assimilating into your first year at Hickory? So I would take them. I didn't want to. I didn't want to pull them out last year at Hickory. <laughs> Were you embarrassed? So I, I yeah, I was embarrassed. So I had them in my bag. Um, so anytime I needed them, I'd go grab my little toilet out of my bag and just hold it in my hand, and I'd go put it back in there. Uh, Watley ended up catching on to me though. Um, <laughs> So, so he started going over there and messing with my stuff. So. Yeah. For those who aren't familiar, uh, the the most famous one is probably the, the toilet that you keep where you flush bad at bats, right? You scream right. flush bad at bats. What other things did you have? I had a coin uh, that just said, like, be consistent. You know, for me, that's, like, attitude, um, your personality. Like, don't change just because you're 0 for 20 or 20 for 20. Like, be the same person every day regardless which is definitely a struggle and a grind um, <laughs> some days. But, you know, I truly believe that that's what makes a successful just person in general. Um, let's see what else that I have out there this year. And then I had my little Captain America guy. Um, that just reminds me to be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else. And then uh, I had this little pin. It's like a little hitter guy that my dad gave me a long time ago. It just gives me peace. Let's me relax and be calm. So those are the four things I carried everywhere, but no one really knew about it until Wally pulled it out one day. Is he is he telling your secret to everybody? No, he would just take it out and put it on the bench because he started using it at one point. Oh, okay, so. so so it's less making fun of you and more trying to use it for himself. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, we'll take it back to the very beginning of your baseball career. Growing up in San Antonio, you were very close to your father, who was one of your coaches in high school as well. What was it like playing baseball and, and playing, I guess, just athletics in, in Southern Texas? It was a lot of fun. Uh, I think I grew up I, football, baseball were the two seasons I always knew. Uh, cause my dad was a high school coach, and you can't really do anything else in Texas except coach football. And then everything else is secondary. So I grew up knowing two seasons, football season and baseball season. Um, and then in middle school, I got into basketball a little bit, just played seventh and eighth grade years. Um, but, I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was a good, there's a lot of good competition here. I feel like San Antonio could be a hotbed with a few more resources. Uh, it's just undervalued because, I mean, growing up, all this select baseball, everything was either in Dallas or Houston for me. So I was on a team out of Houston growing up. So it's like if you wanted to really, like, play legit teams, you had to, like, travel for it. So um, in that respect, I'd say, like, the town's down a little bit in San Antonio. But over the years, it's risen up. You've got a lot of D1 athletes coming out of here now. So it's cool to see just how San Antonio has grown up from when I started, you know, playing select baseball to now. You're a pretty good football player, too. What pushed baseball <laughs> up for you? Uh I just knew from a young age, baseball is my passion. Um, I do love playing football. I miss Friday nights. Uh, those were a lot of fun here in the band as you trot out there for the first possession of the game. It was just so much fun. I gave it up after my junior season. Uh, it was during spring football. I just decided, you know what, y'all just focus on, like, the team. I'm going to step away. Um, wasn't a very popular decision at my high school, but 
Uh, I felt like since I'd committed to play baseball at Texas Tech that I should give that all my attention and not football anymore. Um, but it was a hard decision. I remember going back to the first game, and that was rough. I was sitting on the 50-yard line like, oh, my gosh, <laughs> all my friends are growing up are playing, and I'm sitting here watching. This sucks. <laughs> what was it like to watch Patrick Mahomes in college then? Oh, that was stupid. <laughs> so it was his last year there. I just remember that Oklahoma game where it was like 65, 63, something stupid, where Pat – every. I swear every ball he threw, he would scramble, just run in circles, and then just chunk it out and do his wide open in the end zone. And it was just like, oh, and Baker's doing the same thing. It was just like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> that game, I'm not kidding, probably took four and a half hours. Really? Just because they were just throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball. And in college, the clock stops on the first down. So it's like, oh, my goodness. Here, I, the first half, that was probably the only game I stayed the entire game the whole season because we were either destroying them at half or getting destroyed at half. So there's no point in staying. Um, that was the first game I stayed the entire time. And uh, I remember the, the seats were ended up being pretty empty. So I'm just like sprawled out laying in the stands, just like, oh, is this ever going to end? <laughs> you weren't wishing but you were it was, out there? Oh, man, I do wish. There's days where I'm like, oh, I just want to go throw, throw routes or something. Yeah. Um, but that's a different level. Yeah, you know, cool. I end up playing at. those guys. I mean, we eat lunch with those. We'd eat lunch with the football team. Those are those are animals. Yeah. Those aren't humans. They're yeah. big dudes. It's crazy. Now, and if they're not tall, they're just swole. And you're just yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I don't want to get hit by you. Yeah, they're different breeds out there. That's for sure. Definitely. Uh, now, the the choice to go to Texas Tech is interesting too, because both your parents went to Texas. So, what really went into going to Texas Tech? That was my first offer at the time. Um, it was actually during football season. It was my bye week. Uh, I went on a visit up there. And the very first time I stepped out of the truck, Tadlock, they're all in golf cart. And Tadlock goes, oh, you're tall. That's his little accent. But uh, I was like, oh, you're kind of short. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just fell in love with the campus. It, it, to me, it smelt, felt like my world in Lubbock was just so small. Everything I needed was in one area of the campus. Cause I think it's like the third largest campus in the country, just like acreage wise or whatever. Um, my world was so small. The only time I would leave like the little baseball area was literally to go to class. My, I had to walk like 10 minutes to class every day. But I mean, other than that, that's what I liked about it. Literally everything was right there. You got the weight room, um, our pad where we eat, our study hall, everything is literally like a 30 second walk from the field. So it was perfect for me. Jeez. And, I mean, the atmosphere at Texas Tech for baseball, incredible. You guys had some really good teams during your time there. What was it like playing baseball for Texas Tech? Unreal. The fans, that's what I love. They were ruthless to the other team. They would get after them, but they had our backs. You could take a fastball right down the middle and strike out, and they will get after the umpire. I love it. Um, <laughs> But, like, just – I just remember this past – this past Super Regionals was unlike anything else. It was literally – they take the lead, we take the lead. They take the lead, we take the lead. The entire Super Regionals, three straight games of that. And it was just, like, how many times can your heart sink into your stomach? We probably have the world record in three days span. Like, I just remember staying at shortstop in game one, and it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. We have a two-run lead, I think, in the eighth. And they got, like, second and third. And I'm like, oh. Gosh, they end up getting one across, and it's like they got this guy who can hit bombs. Their whole team hit bombs, but you just you're just waiting for something to happen. You know it's about to happen, and we ended up getting out of it. But gosh, remember they would hit balls, and I'd just be like, "Oh no, <laughs> I cannot go out like this. We got to make it to Omaha." And then game three, when Kurt hit that three-run homer, that was unbelievable. I'd never been so happy in a baseball game in my life. <laughs> Everyone was just jumping around, jumping up and down, going bananas. Uh, it was cool, though, because the Oklahoma State fans, the whole series, anytime they, like, made it out, uh, scored a run, they would chant OSU. Like, we saw it was really annoying. It was probably really cool for those fans. But anyway, back and forth the whole weekend, back and forth. And in game three, our fans started chanting TTU back out when we did something. So it was like the fans were just going back and forth. And when we hit that homer, the entire stadium is yelling TTU. And it was just unbelievable. And then we go out and Dane ends up striking out the guy that hit the homer to beat us in game two. Uh, actually off Dane. 
Um, it was it was a lot of fun, but the fans were just so cool to be a part of. Just such so special. Now, would you rather be at that atmosphere or TD Ameritrade and go back to the College World Series? <sighs> oh, that's a tough. One. Definitely the World Series. Yeah. That was my dream growing up was to go to Omaha. I think I went four or five times as a fan. Um, so I grew up a Longhorn fan uh, since both my parents were there. In 05, we actually went to the World Series when they won it. We were at every game except, like, the first two Nebraska games because, the, you know, Nebraska is Nebraska. Everyone's right there. They're going to go to the game. Um, but that just sparked, like, my dream to play in Omaha. But that was at Rosenblatt, unfortunately. Then it switched over in, like, either 09 or 10. But, man. That was crazy. I, I remember we were game one against Michigan, and that place was like 20,000 people. And they don't, they don't even care, like, who they're rooting for. They just cheer. It was so cool. It was so loud in some of those games. So I could only imagine what, like, a World Series game would be like for a playoff game. I actually went to the Astros-Yankees game when Altuve hit the walk-off. Wow. I was actually there. And uh, that place was like a football game. They never sat down. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, why is this like that? <laughs> that's Um, incredible it seems like everybody who's played in the college world series has the the moment where they're like i'm here it seems like for starting pitchers that we've talked to it's been you know getting out onto the mound you're about to throw that first pitch you just kind of look around and and see how big the place is and how loud it is did you have a moment like that it would have had to been my sophomore year when i was there the first time i would say it wasn't in game one because we got rain delayed. We got pushed back. We played at like nine o'clock at night. It was dark, not very many people there. And we're playing number one, Florida. We ended up upsetting them. And I was like, wow, what a game. But I would say the next game, we played Arkansas again, delayed, pushed back, delayed. But this time we ended up playing like the next day, early in the morning. And it, it stadium got pretty packed and we ended up losing. But I remember Dominic Fletcher hit a home run. And I was like, oh, shoot, we're in Omaha. There's so many people in the stands going for this ball. Because, like, in Lubbock, I'm not used to fans being in the outfield because we don't have bleachers out there. Uh, So he hits this ball over the bullpen and right, and there's just people everywhere. And I was like, oof, wow, that's a a pretty big home run right there. (laughs) Yeah, that was my moment where I was like, oh, here we are. Now, when you were drafted by the Texas Rangers, obviously it's pretty easy to see growing up in Texas and, and you were drafted by the Rangers. It's a cool moment. But what was the first thing that flashed through your mind when you saw the Rangers pop up there on the screen? Oh, man, I think I knew a few picks before the way they draft, everything goes down. So I was like, oof. But you don't really know until it's, like, official. Um, so I'm just sitting there and it pops up and I was like, oh. It was, it was kind of like a relief all at once because all year – you know, you got people watching you to get drafted. They're, like, looking for things that are negative about you to try to drop your stock, you know. And it's – I just felt so much weight off my shoulders in that moment. Uh, it was so cool. We were at the house. We had just swept our regional. So it was the next day. Uh, I woke up early that morning. We went and hit. Me and my brother went up to the field and hit uh, just to keep our mind off things. Um, we're at the house just sitting there waiting patiently. And the first round takes forever, or at least it felt like forever, like an eternity. Um, And I was only the eighth pick, like I can imagine. Um, But, yes, sitting there sweating bullets and you get picked, and it's just like your dreams come true. Now you have the opportunity to do what you've always dreamed of doing. Um, But it's just like the next step to where you want to go. So it was so cool, such a great moment. And I grew up an Alex Rodriguez fan. So I was a, a fan of three teams, the Mariners, the Rangers and the Yankees, so uh, it was a pretty cool moment. What did you like about A-Rod? When he was young, he was an MVP. Unbelievable. I don't know if he won an MVP with the Yankees. He might, he might have. Um, I think he won but, one, yeah. But uh, when he was with the Rangers, he won the MVP. Him playing shortstop, I always wanted to be a shortstop, so I just tried to model my game after him, and he was unbelievable. Um, so I was a big baseball card collector. I still am. But uh, I just remember every Christmas, birthday, my dad would get me A-Rod cards, and I'd be ecstatic <laughs> about it. And any time the Rangers would be on TV, we'd try to watch it with local channels here. And Oh, man. I just loved watching him play. I loved everything about him. Have you gotten a chance to meet him? <laughs> no, I haven't met him. <laughs> You'd probably meet Jennifer Lopez now if you're <laughs> meeting him. They're attached at the hip. But, yeah. but now it's – yeah, he was an idol of mine for sure. 
when when you look at what he has done in his career and all the success that he had with the Rangers for the three years that he was there and all the really talented left side of the infield guys for the Rangers, what would it mean to etch your name into that group of guys that have been so successful in Texas? That'd be pretty special, I'd say. Um, we had Beltre over there just two, three years ago. Unbelievable player, just a great person. Um, it was pretty cool to meet Michael Young. That was pretty cool growing up watching him play too. Um, that was kind of surreal. He actually comes out there and he's throwing BP. And I'm like, who is this guy? He's throwing like little cutters. And I'm just like, dang, this is a rough BP. And they're like, oh, it's Michael Young. And I was like, oh, I'm not going to say a word then. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> like, you better, better pop it up and just swing. Um, so that was cool. That was a lot of fun. It, that was an instructs actually in Frisco okay. um, this past offseason. But no, it'd be it'd be so cool just to you know get to play on that side of your field. And now I got a new stadium, so that'll be pretty cool too. Um, but when we played those games in Arlington and in Strucks, it was pretty cool to walk out there and be like, "Wow, these guys they stood right here." So it would be pretty cool to do it again. Now you mentioned you did spend some time in Frisco during the off season. What was your time like here in Frisco? It was a lot of fun. We actually played in Frisco uh, in February last year. Very cold. <laughs> very cold it was like 29 degrees drizzling we're playing Mississippi State they had TJ Ginn on the mound who's got a dirty curveball and I don't think I touched a baseball that night at all I don't think any of us did he struck out like 15 it was stupid he's shimmying off the mound on us uh so that my first experience was rough <laughs> it was pretty rough uh but then instructs was a lot better I actually got to play Texas Tech uh during instructs which was yeah very weird just played for them like three four months ago in the world series and now i'm playing against them it was it was weird they got after me a little bit too so it was fun uh so i was just trying to get a few hits that way they'd stop yelling but uh i remember one of my buddies struck me out looking and man that dugout went nuts <laughs> i was like because we'd always had a battle at tech, he'd always be like, I'm striking you out today. He'd be like, okay. Never struck me out. Never struck me out. Then he punches me out, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> this is not going to be good. So I haven't heard I haven't heard the end of it yet. Um, probably never will. But it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Well, I, did you get a couple hits at least? I got a few. Okay. A few singles. No, no damage was done, unfortunately. <laughs> Well, hopefully you get another chance to, to etch some good memories here in Frisco. Yeah, but it, so. you mentioned uh, all the guys that are good off the field, Beltre and Young, and, and being good people. It really seems like that's something that is really important to you. And I know it's been documented, your work in the Miracle League in San Antonio when you were in high school and that kind of thing. How important is the off the field stuff to you? Very important. Um, it started my senior year of high school, actually. I started getting into the Miracle League. Um, but really, it was this program we had in my high school through my senior English teacher. It was called Mac Teach. And every morning, at, so I guess our school started at 8.45. So at like 7 in the morning, I'd go over to an elementary school. And for the kids that were struggling in school or were deemed to have uh, rough, house, uh, rough, rough house lives, would come in early that struggled. And um, I was in, it was called the Motor Lab. So we'd be in the gym playing games, doing exercises with them. And so I just kind of sparked like this overwhelming joy with helping other people and trying to help them succeed over myself. So then it's kind of got into, you know, I'm going to dedicate the way I play for these kids that don't get the opportunity, like in Miracle League or these other kids that their parents are working so many jobs. They don't, they don't really get the chance to play sports or sports eventually will be their only outlet. Like I want to, I want to play the game with respect to where I never take it for granted the opportunity that I have. Um, and then my lunch period, I gave up to tutor kids in high school, mainly with physics and math, because that was my favorite stuff. Um, but that just kind of sparked this overwhelming joy for helping people. And so I try to do as much as I can now. It was hard at, it was hard at tech, honestly, with how busy and um, schedule. And I hate making excuses for that, um, because that should never be an excuse. But, uh, but I can't wait to get back into it, especially next off season when things cool down. I don't have to travel all over the place all the time. Um, but no, I just can't wait to get back into it. 
Well, we'll get you out on this because we appreciate your time spending some time here with us. And uh, we always like to end on just kind of a fun question. So if you could face one major league pitcher in the history of baseball for one at bat with the game on the line, who would you want to face? Mm. I'm going Sandy Koufax. Okay. I'm, I'm going against Sandy Koufax. That mainly because that's my dad's favorite player or favorite pitcher of all time. I think his career ended a little too early. Could have been a lot or had a lot better stats, but he was just so dominant. Yeah. I would love to face him. I mean, there's so many guys that you would <laughs> love to face. Like obviously being a ranger, you'd want to face Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Got one of the hardest fastballs ever. Just had like a rubber arm with throw 160 pitches in a game. That's unheard of in these days. Um, he got Mariano, the best cutter ever seen. Uh, I think he was, what, the first unanimous Hall of Famer. Yeah. 100% vote. Um, there's just so many. Like, like right now we have Garrett Cole, Justin Verlander, two guys that are up for the Cy Young every single year. You got to roll this Chapman that throws 100 from the left side. <laughs> Like, there's just so many guys that you want to face. Um, but in the history of the game, I definitely have to go Koufax. All right. Well, there you go. And you get a hit off of him, right? You'd win the game. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Good. Just don't let him get to his curveball. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Well, Josh, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, we hope you stay safe during this time. We certainly hope to see you soon at some point here in Frisco. Sounds good. Thanks for having me.